there's what I have so far. So the next step will be to cut it off to length. I've got it marked already and then I'll face it down to pretty close to the exact length which is two and a quarter inches. And I'll do that with a cutoff tool or it could be done with a hacksaw. It doesn't matter. And now I'll cut off the length. Facing it to the exact length. This is where concentricity becomes a, a major factor, and I talked so much about that in the previous project how to get things con concentric. So this would be the ideal place to hold the work in a collet when we drill and bore and ream this hole. However, as I told you, this is a very accurate truck, chuck, so I'm almost treating it as if it's a collet. But now the next step, and I put a nice chamfer on this end as well, is to drill a hole in, what was that, two inches deep, I believe. And uh, since it's going to be reamed, 3 8 I'm going to go a little undersized and I'm even going to allow <clears throat> if I can a few thousandths to bore it before I ream it and that assures concentricity. I've already used a starter drill and now this is the quarter inch bit that I'm going to drill two inches in and I've got the bit marked but of course you can use the graduations on the quill however you want to do it use plenty of oil. It's a rather deep hole. But remember it's blind so do not drill all the way through. And now I will open up the hole with an 1136 drill bit all the way to the bottom. I suppose I'm making too big of an issue out of this, but I was all ready to bore the hole back into concentricity, in fact if it was out. And uh, the only boring bars I have that are uh, small enough to go in the hole are way too short to do the job. But I thought, well I'll go ahead and check it with an indicator while I'm at it. So with the last word indicator in there, I was amazed at how true it's running within I think it's hitting a, this is a rough hole, you know, it's not rimmed. So it's hitting a little nick in there when you see that that needle flicker that like that, but it's within a thousandth of an inch, so there is no need for me to bore this. So I'm going to ream it, but I have to go up the next size on the scale from 1130 seconds, which is Twenty-three sixty-four. So I'm going to drill it out twenty-three sixty-four. So I will not show that, and then ream it three eighths. And now I'm reaming three eighths all the way to the bottom. The lathe work is done on this piece. Drill and tap a little hole and that's all that there is left on this. Okay, it's looking good. And I've already laid out 5 16 from the end, if you can see the scribe mark here, the location of the uh, set screw hole. So taking my automatic center punch, I'm just going to punch that. By the way, in a future video, I believe I'm going to make an automatic center punch. So watch for that this winter sometime if I get to it.
and I will drill that and tap it 832. I believe off camera because you've seen that so often. The hole has been drilled and now with a little tap magic tap it as straight as I can by eye. One thing I forgot to tell you earlier about these spring-loaded centers is you have to back up your tap on a drill press when you're tapping. So the spring uh, allows you to back it up without damaging the thread. So that actually is a big deal. Well, I'm quitting for the day. I'm tired, but I'm at least halfway through because this piece is done and uh, Tomorrow I'll tackle this, and other than the heat treating of it, it's a pretty easy little piece to, to make. See you tomorrow. Hello again, it's the next day, and I've completed this part, and I'm going to start on the point. And the first thing I'm going to do is to take this 3 8 diameter water cooling uh, drill rod, which is high carbon and can be heat treated, and I'm going to put a point on it, a 60 degree point, and I'm going to do it by the uh, compound rest method here with a carbide tool. And I am not planning on grinding the point like I did on the other uh, bell center punch, although I have left the setup on the uh, Craftsman lathe and was planning to do as such. But uh, I believe it's going to be accurate enough just by turning it uh, carefully with a carbide tool. All right, I'm ready to start turning the 60-degree uh, point on this with the compound. Now, before I do, just one item. Uh, I have said several times tongue-in-cheek that I'm going to add music to my videos, but fear not. That was all done uh, in jest. I have no intentions of doing that. Nothing can ruin a video or a movie worse than uh, music or too much music or too loud a music, so just relax on that. I started with a two foot piece of 3 8 drill rod and it hasn't been cut off yet so the next thing I will do is cut it off to approximate length. I'm just going to use a hand hacksaw and uh, I'll, I'll face it then to the exact dimension and chamfer it ever so slightly. It's been faced off to length and that length was as you recall right there. Now I put some uh, layout die on it and I'm going to mark off the uh, notch here, the flat, whatever you want to call it, and then I'll meet you over at the bridge port. And let me show you one other thing. I think this is a dimension that I failed to give you. And that is right here that it's three hundred thousandths across the flat. And since this is 3.8 stock, 0.375, the distance I will feed the tool down into the work will be, what, 75,000. Simple enough. I'm at the bridge board and I'm ready to mill the flat. So the work is held on parallels and it's marked as such. I've come down and touched off. And remember it's 75 thousandths deep, so I will crank it up, and I have zeroed out the uh, collar here. I'm going to take 60 thousandths off as a roughing uh, pass, and then the final 15. And 
now I'm raising the table. To 75. And I'll take it right down to those layout lines, lengthwise. This is a carbide cutter. I'm only using it because it was already in the mill. And this uh, length dimension here for the flat is not very critical at all. And that's all there is to that. I've deburred the part, removed the layout die with some uh, abrasive cloth. And for the heck of it, I'm measuring this distance here. And you can see it's right on 300 thousandths, although it's not very critical. Notice another thing now, when you compare the original here, that the finish on the point is not very good. It was just turned. It was not ground. So there is no need to grind that unless you just want something extra to do. Now it is ready to heat treat. Remember this is a high carbon drill rod so it can be heat treated. You can't heat treat it if it's just mild steel. So I'm going to start by hardening it and this time I'm going to use a torch rather than a little furnace and then I'll temper it and I'm going to use the hot plate. So I'm going to show you a variation of uh, different ways to do this. I'm now ready to heat treat this and heat treating covers a broad range. It could be hardening, tempering, which is what I'm going to do. It could be annealing, unnormalizing and so on. That's what we call heat treating. Now you can read volumes about this, but a lot of times it turns into chemistry and it's uh, you're not going to understand it as I can't understand it. But I'm going to start by hardening this and I will use a uh, MAP gas which is methyl acetylene propadine and uh, do not even think about using propane. It is not hot enough. If you got a plumber's torch with acetylene that'll work or you saw me use the little furnace in the other video that uh, where I did this but uh, I'm just going to heat it up till it's at the critical temperature which is cherry red and it will lose its magnetism at that point so I will demonstrate that with this magnet when it turns red that the magnetism is gone temporarily of course but you can wow your kids show your kids how you can make magnetism go away that's it's kind of neat so I'm going to set it on uh, my little hearth here of uh, fire bricks and uh, I'm going to set it on these nails and uh, we'll give it a go. Now when you do this be very careful you don't burn yourself and have everything ready because the redness will dissipate very quickly. It'll cool very very rapidly so have a pliers. I like the parallel jaw to, to grip it. The other kind seems to slip and since this is water hardening steel I have a coffee can of water down there if it is oil hardening, uh, you need to do it outside. It'll smoke the whole house up. But do not uh, use the incorrect cooling medium. And there are different mediums. There's water, there's oil, there's air, there's uh, uh, lead and, and, uh, and salt and different things like that. So, uh, But I'm going to try to keep this simple. So here I go, lighting up the MAP torch which gets quite hot. Here I go. The reason I'm uh, using nails is I try to get it up off of the hearth and since uh, gravity is fighting me here, the little heads on those finishing nails keep the part from, it's already at 600 degrees, keep the part from rolling off the bench. See how the nails have turned red already? Shows that they are at 1500 degrees. Now if you're using propane, the most you'll be able to do is to get a nail or a paper clip red. You'll never get something this large in diameter to be red. And you want to soak this. That is, 
allow it to be uh, at, at the red heat, the critical temperature, for a, a minute or two, depending on the thickness, so that it's at the same temperature throughout its thickness, not just on the surface. a real long piece you'll need two or more torches or you will not be able to do it with this type of torch. But see how red it's getting already? Now let's do the magnet test. Note that there is no attraction to the magnet. Pretty cool, huh? Very red, and I showed you the color chart in one of the other videos. You can get that online under Temple. The word is Temple. Like, well, okay, I'm going to quench it. You won't see that, but move it in a figure eight in the water. And there it is. Harder than a rock. Now the tempering needs to be done very quickly. It, it's, it is so hard, it is brittle, there's a lot of stress in there. If you wait till the next day or a week from now, it could crack spontaneously. I'm not saying it will, but some kinds of steel, you pick it up and you'll see that it's cracked. So I'm going to do the tempering right now, but since I'm going to use, uh, I don't have the furnace, I'm going to use uh, colors. I'll talk about that now, but I'll, I'll shine this up on the lathe with some abrasive cloth off camera. <laughs> 